SABC suffered from the capricious use of authority and power to terrorize staff and to deflect from the corporation to deflect the corporation from its mandate and its editorial policies. For years, bad practices grew in the dark and in the shadow in an environment of fear and secrecy in the newsroom. Today, the SABC board continues the process of confronting its difficult past by addressing these practices, by opening up and owning up. Oh, there you have it. Good evening and welcome to our brand new slot of Unfiltered here on SABC 3 and Channel 404. Uh, my name is Desiree Chaoge. Activists and interest groups have welcomed the release of the SABC's much-anticipated report on alleged editorial interference. Veteran journalist and former chairperson of the Press Council, Dr. Joe Kohle, was tasked to look into political and editorial interference at the public broadcaster. The Commission of Inquiry also investigated alleged personal favors in the workplace. It also found that the newsroom took instructions from ANC leaders, particularly the former communications minister, Faith Motambi, and former board members, such as Ellen Chavalala. Tonight, we ask, can the SABC uh, confidently say it is free from political interference. To further uh, discuss this, we welcome the chairperson of the South African National Editors Forum, Matlatsi Matlatsi, welcome, um, as well as uh, uh, Mr. Tami Tami Ngozi. Tami Ngozi <laughs> from the Right to Know campaign. And we also have the DA Shadow Minister of Communications and Digital Technologies, Pumzile Van Dam, uh, who's joining us on the line. A uh, warm welcome to all of you. Matlatsi, before we go into the content of the report today, mm. it, it looks into the duration of 2012 to 2017. You were here around the time. What were your experiences? I think that uh, actually Dr. George Hole summed it up quite well. Uh, we were working under tremendous pressure. We, were, we faced uh, the fear that he talks about. Uh, we, fa we got instructions that were so pathetic at points. I mean, I was thinking back. There was one instruction that we were getting from Claudio Mutsuneng, I think, in May 2016, where he was telling us that any story that was related to the president had to be five minutes long on the radio and about three minutes on TV. And that was not based on any editorial content. It was just because it was a story related to the president. There were stupid instructions that said that, for example, uh, the DA must be removed from a story where they were actually the complainants in a court case against Claudio yeah. Um and, and so the list went on and on and on and on. And it was a difficult time to work because every day you felt like you were fighting a different battle, especially when we headed to the 2014 elections and towards the 2016 elections. He's on a different channel tonight telling the viewers that he made people at the SABC happy. That made me so angry. Um, and I have to be honest, it made me so angry that he still wants to believe the madness uh, that is in his head. Uh, we know better. The people, uh, the SABC is living the consequences of the cloudy madness. The fact that the SABC is in financial constraints right now and there are people who have lost their jobs and could not be taken back as freelancers or their shifts have been cut off. These are all consequences of the cloudy era where, you know, he thought if he dished out money and gave people increases or gave certain people promotions, it would be okay. But we knew the work that he was doing, which was to try and ensure that uh, especially the ANC president and those aligned to him uh, got favorable reporting. He had a direct call to the newsroom, and that should never happen in an institution that is supposed to be uh, uh, standing up for the constitution and actually central to the democracy of South Africa. Tammy, does Right to Know feel vindicated because you made all the noise required to uh, highlight uh, the wrongdoing that was happening at the SABC? Look, I think for, for us it's, it's much more celebration on behalf of the, civil, you know, of, the, of the public, primarily because we thought you know, political inf interference in, in the territorial policy simply kind of perpetuate the propaganda machinery of a political faction within the ANC. And for us, it, we, we, we couldn't 
imagine an SABC that is that compromised and is used as a misinformation tool, really, to essentially filter people's you know, th thought processes to actually favor a particular faction of the ANC, particularly back then, you know, your former president Jacob Zuma and his, his allies. So for us, I think, I think it's, it's, it's one of the issues that we had always raised to say the independence of the SABC is paramount to a functioning democracy. And for us, that's the core value that yeah. we stood for, to simply say this needs to be a, an institution that functions free from capital and political in, you know, interference on behalf of the public and should actually be a public institution that serves to actually advance the, the, the gains of our democracy and the constitution. So for us, it's, it's a very welcome victory. Ms. Van Damme, let's bring you in. Uh, a lot of dissatisfaction about the outcomes of the ad hoc committee on the SABC and all the things that came out of that process. How does the outcome of this process uh, help the other process which you are part of? I mean, I don't think there is anything glaringly sort of new information expect, except the extended testimonies from the various staff at the SABC that was very different from uh, what came out of the SABC inquiry. So for us, none of it is uh, very surprising. But what it does do, especially with regards to Faith Watambi, who is now the chairperson of the Cocktail Portfolio Committee in Parliament, is that it further bolsters the finding um, by Parliament's legal services that she might have misled Parliament. I think this is now a second report uh, which, you know, basically bolsters that fact. In the last Parliament, the Speaker of Parliament was supposed to take action against the family and was in fact advised to uh, lay criminal charges against her. She didn't do that, um, so now we will take it upon ourselves to lay those criminal charges. A person like Mutambi, who, you know, forced the employment of Claudia Metoning, and today the FABC is on the precipice of a financial crisis. I think this is the man that is to blame for this, uh, Mutambi aided him. Mutambi basically thought she controlled the SABC. I mean, in the report, there's an instance where she tells an SABC staff member, I will fire you, I will fire you, and she called her fat. So this is basically, you know, two people who absolutely had no respect for the SABC's independence, um, and they must be held accountable. I'd like you to expand more on that intention to lay criminal charges, but we're going to take a break for now. You're watching Unfiltered. We'll be back in a moment. During Women's Month, what I think we should remember as women, both in our personal and in our work lives, is that you never know what the future is going to bring and always to keep a sense of optimism because there really are endless possibilities for what you can achieve and the good things that are going to happen to you. SABC News celebrates Women's Month. Now in 1963, Nelson Mandela, Ahmed Kathrada, Dennis Goldberg and Andrew Mlangeni were accused of treason and stood trial. We are standing in a spot with so much history. This was actually the headquarters of the South African Communist Party. The climb will be in celebration of 10 years of Nelson Mandela International Day. What lies ahead of, of this climb as we live today is a big mountain. Why did you decide to be part of this initiative? The reason why I'm doing this is because I really believe in education and the doors it can open for you. So education is the gateway. Yes, actors today, the young actors, people, we used to take advices from Abata uh, It's a rape, it's murder, it's shooting, it's killing another. I think we will be happy if the army can come in and try to patrol in and out, day shift, night shift. The South African National Defence Force will be joining police in the operations uh, following the announcement made by the police minister. It always creates a very bad perception internationally if you use an army or any defence force elements 
in a, a internal situation. If you bring soldiers here, they don't have what we call it tiakes, rubber bullets. What they have is machine guns, and they were trained to deal with a forceful enemy. My message to women and young girls is that you can achieve anything. Believe in yourselves. There really are endless possibilities for what you can achieve and the good things that are going to happen to you. There's an opportunity to be bold, to be free, to be daring, to be unique and take your place in the world. During this month, I'd like to say to all women, not just in the journalism industry, to continue that fight. A mentor once told me it's not good enough for women to go knocking on doors. It's time to beat them down. SABC News celebrates Women's Month. Welcome back. You're watching Unfiltered. And let's continue now with our conversation. Let's pick up with you, Ms. Van Damme. You were talking about the Democratic Alliance's intentions to open up a criminal case against Ms. Faith Motambi. Yes. Uh, so not only does she violate the Broadcasting Act, which establishes the SABC as an independent institution, and in fact states that the SABC board has the final authority on decisions related to the SABC. Um, and as it should be, the editorial staff should have the final decision on uh, news. But so the, the point in which we will lay charges is her misleading parliament. During the SABC inquiry, inquiry she used the word never. She said she never interfered in the SABC's editorial, editorial independence. We now have proof of a second report uh, stating that she did indeed mislead parliament. So this is a violation of the Powers and Privileges Act, which states that if any witness, uh, which she was as a witness, uh, gave information that uh, misled Parliament, they are liable to a fine or imprisonment of up to two years. So we think that the manner in which Mutan not only misled Parliament, but also uh, contributed to uh, the SABC, which is almost at ground zero uh, today, must absolutely be held accountable. We have lots of instances where, you know, cases are opened and then the matter is not taken forward. I intend to follow this up relentlessly until uh, Mutambi has a day in court. But Lassie, we spoke to you about your personal experiences, but in terms of Senef, are you satisfied with the thoroughness of the work of Dr. Joe Kohlwe uh, and some of the remedies that he's suggesting? Uh, someone was saying that uh, it's a considered uh, uh, report and the things that they suggest are not difficult to, uh, to implement. Look, I think we, quite, we welcome the recommendations, especially the one that includes uh, establishing a committee that would then uh, hopefully provide refuge for SABC employees. I think if you look back and you mentioned the fact that the problems at the SABC reigned or uh, Claudi Magnus reigned from 12, 2012 to 2017 and all of the institutions that were created by the constitution to actually protect the SABC from that madness actually failed the SABC. Uh, if you look at it, um, and as I also speak again as somebody who was here, there was nobody else who was willing to actually step in. A lot of people stood by and watched. A lot of South Africans laughed off some of Claudia Mutsuaneng's uh, utterances, even though they were detrimental to our democracy because the SABC is so important. So I think that this uh, three-member committee that he wants to create, which will act as an internal ombuds of sorts, will provide that refuge for editorial staff to say when there is a crisis or there is differences or interpretation interpretation of what should be done, they can run to that uh, uh, committee because you can't always rely on parliament to come to the party as we've seen what has happened in the past. So I think we welcome that. I think there's also a lot of unhappiness in terms of the so-called enforcers. Uh, um, but I think that was the difficulty that uh, Dr. George Holler had to navigate because if you look at it, Faith Mutambi was an enforcer. The fact that as a minister who was supposed to be a defender of the SABC failed. Uh, Jimmy Matthews, who was the chief New, the executive of news failed to protect his team and I think he had to act as a bulwark and he 
he did nothing. And then you are now expecting other people below that layer to be held accountable. I think accountability is important, but I think in this instance, so many people failed the institution, failing our constitution. Tell me a sense that the report is more corrective and not punitive. Do you also get the, a similar uh, sense of it? Pierre, I, th I, th I think there's, there's, there's a general culture that simply says we will do an investigation, we will, we will you know, publicize the reports, we will name people. No one has to be punished. But it, f for me, it remains to be seen how far we're willing to see the wheels of justice really grinding on. I mean, you know, we can draw parallels with the same processes like the state security agency high-level panel report. Nobody has been held accountable, even though former ministers were even fingered on that. So for me, I think there's a, there's a, there's a general culture that simply says we have politicians that hope things die down, right? We're almost like a, a society of sensational, you know, conversations. You know, when things are out there, we make noise, but two months down the line, suddenly things you know take a take a back seat and all sorts of things so i think we, we bear the responsibilities of civil society organization to keep this in the memory of the public to simply say hold on we can't continue with reports and indictments and indictments against politicians over and over and over again but our institutions our law enforcement institutions like your siu your your npa are not necessarily going after people and i think i think it's a similar process we would expect the same thing after you know uh, uh, judge zondo's uh, state state capture commission we're hoping something would also happen. So I'm just drawing parallels between all these processes that simply says, we go through these processes, spend resources on these things, things get put to the fore, and nothing really sort of happens. Nobody is held accountable at the highest level. We're always going for the low hanging fruit. And for me, that does not necessarily mm -hmm. show any, it doesn't give any confidence. So for the SABC to regain the confidence of the public, something has to be seen to be done in a way that we go after even the decision makers. Faith Mutambi and everybody else have to be dealt with decisively for us to be able to say, we're not going to be able you know, to tolerate unethical leadership. Uh, we're not going to tolerate you know, uh, corrupt leadership. We're not to tolerate folks that actually essentially use state entities as their own kitchens and, and, and they, they cooking their own lucky stars like a finance minister sometimes. <laughs> Let's take another break. You're watching Unfiltered. We'll be back in a moment. SABC News mobile app is your one-stop digital portal to all the news you need. Stay connected with the latest in breaking news. Watch the SABC News channel along with clips and live streams of all the big news events. And listen to all the SABC News radio stations live, including podcasts and much more. Simply download the SABC News app to your Android or iOS device from either the Play Store or the App Store. SABC News. Independent. Impartial. Thousands of taxi and bus commuters have been left stranded in Bloemfontein. The taxi owners and the passengers will need to communicate. I ended up really on the streets since I think it was 93. Somebody will threaten you, yeah, I'm going to get you when you sleep. Hinton says life on the streets is a living hell. It's totally not safe on the street. Who is killing who? There is one faction that thinks that it rules the municipality. And these people are running people crazy. Now in 1963, Nelson Mandela, Ahmed Kathrada, Dennis Goldberg and Andrew Mlangeni were accused of treason and stood trial. We are standing in a spot with so much history. This was actually the headquarters of the South African Communist Party. The climb will be in celebration of 10 years of Nelson Mandela International Day. What lies ahead of this climb as we live today is a big mountain. Why did you decide to be part of this initiative? The reason why I'm doing this is because I really believe in education and the doors it can open for you. So education is the gateway. Yes, actors today, the young actors, people, we used to take advices from Abata uh,
Welcome back and thanks for watching. We're asking you tonight, can the SABC confidently say it's free from political interference? And uh, we're talking to Matlasi Matlasi from the South African National Editors Forum and Tamin Gosi from Right to Know and Pumzile Van Dam, uh, the DO Shadow Minister of Communications. Ms. Van Dam, let's get, come back to you again. Uh, you were part of the fifth administration uh, as a member of parliament in the sixth administration. Are you confident that matters related to the SABC will be finally resolved? Um, I absolutely do not have that confidence. Um, I have been on the committee since 2015. In fact, uh, we, we pushed for the SABC inquiry to be held. The BA took the matter to court for Saudi to be fired. So every time I think, okay, things are settled at the SABC, something else happens. So I don't think we've seen the last of political interference or at least attempts of political interference. We know that the SABC is an important uh, institution to capture, particularly during the election. Um, so we are very pleased with the SABC board and the current staff and the work that they've done. They have um, fearlessly defended their independence. They published, I mean, they aired that footage of the Minister of Communications attempting to uh, block them from reporting on um, a, a protest at an ANC manifesto launch. Um, they have already taken action um, against some of the people in the mentioned in the report released today. What I am disappointed about in the report, look, I'm happy with the recommendations such as the G of News should be the editor-in-chief and a couple of others, but I don't think it went uh, deep enough into actually dealing with the issue of political interference. I understand that there might have been a lack of evidence, but I believe that specific topic, which was uh, the point of the Commission of Inquiry, was to examine political interference. So it would have been good to see, you know, to say this person did this, this person did that. For example, the finding is that there was no interference uh, by the ANC um, at the SABC, and yet in the same report, there's talk about how the ANC and KZN, uh, the events were covered all the time. So I th I, what I wish would have happened was a far in depth examination of that. And I stand at alert um, in this administration to make sure that there's no political interference at the SABC, but just not only that, but to make sure that the funding given to the SABC, we have a institution that is at the precipice. So I will, I generally will not relax. I think we cannot go back to the situation um, that we were in under the cloudy reign of terror, but that's not to say it couldn't happen again in the future. So I stay on a bit. I just want to state that we did invite the African National uh, Congress for comment, uh, but Mr. Bulemabi indicated that they were not able to take part in this conversation. As a member of parliament, what processes will get into, uh, will, will kick in now uh, in terms of Ms. Motambi's continued uh, presence within uh, the House? Well, um, the, uh, we laid a report uh, at the beginning of this term with the ethics committee stating that she's unsuitable to be a member of parliament given you know, her, her role as a minister of communications and also her links with the Guptas. So it's entirely up to the ethics committee to investigate and give a finding. But I think also the ball ultimately lies in the court of the ANC. They must just, you know, uh, decide whether Mutambi should continue to to be a an MP. I think there's conclusive proof that uh, you know she misled Parliament. She abused her role as the Minister of Communications. And if I was a leader of the ANC and this was one of our MPs, I would say you know show them the door. But ultimately, it's up to them. And I think right to know raises a good point that we need to see. Uh, the wheels of justice turn in this matter. So, I mean, we will pursue it relentlessly and we'll most certainly, certainly not 
let it be an issue that we forget about. Um, I intend to pursue this relentlessly. Ms. Van Damme, at this point, we're going to thank you so much for taking part in our conversation tonight. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Maklasi, the recommendation for an establishment of an editorial committee to uphold editorial mm. policies. Uh, does Senator think this is a step in the right direction? Definitely. I think it's a step in the right direction. The SABC needs uh, that, that space that anybody can go to to actually complain if there is uh, or if they feel that there is any kind of interference whether commercial or political or perhaps trying to uh, report certain things in a certain way I think it will go a long way they've recommended a retired judge a lecturer or a former lecturer of media ethics and former journalists in there that will serve as an important institution uh, within the SABC to ensuring that political uh, independent political ind or editorial independence actually takes place. I also think that the SABC is in a much better place if you look at what has happened in the courts. We now have the, uh, the ruling that says that the minister can actually not interfere in the day-to-day -day running of the SABC, moving the editorial uh, powers to uh, the, ed the executive of news. I think that is quite critical. It removes the commercial arm. Remember, it, was, it used to be the chief executive officer that was the editor-in-chief. Then Cloudy tried to put it under the COO's office. It's now been Returned to uh, the executive editor of, of, of uh, the executive it's a chief the okay. chief executive of news. I think that's quite uh, critical to ensure that editorial independence remains within the news sector. Tell me, just to wrap up, what do you think should be happening at the SABC to take it forward? Um, I, th I think give the board an opportunity, um, give them a chance to kind of really. Um, in implement the turnaround strategy. We still is, is SABC free from political interference? The answer is no. I mean, we see the to and fro between the Minister of, of Communications and and the, 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 the and Treasury. And you hear people like Isma Khashula saying, our friends elsewhere in the world say they're surprised we're not in charge of the ANC. So there certainly is the battle for the soul of the SABC. So for me, I think it's, it's a much more bigger battle moving forward. And I, I would like to comment, I mean, I think everybody that stood firm, even in, in, under immense pressure from Faith and everybody else, as an employee at SABC, those who blew their whistle, those who remained true to, to what their duties were within the SABC to try and fight for the SABC, I think they need to be commended. To yeah. it. Are you coming back? <laughs> <laughs> My Thank boss you is so much for both of you for taking part in this conversation <laughs> tonight, <laughs> Matlasi Matlasi, from Senate and Tamin Gosi from Right to Know. Thank That's you for your unfiltered for tonight. Thanks for watching. Join us again next week, Monday evening. Bye bye.